Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the EDM podcast. This is a show where we're interviewing artists, producers, and basically anybody in the industry who we think will help you along your journey of music production. Now, today we have a very exciting guest. We've got Nick Sadler on the podcast who has started up some of the biggest labels in electronic music, specifically in the dubstep scene, such as Never Say Die and Disciple Recordings. But apart from that, he's also the runner of a website called The Label Machine, which was originally a book he wrote, which he's now transformed into a full-on business where he coaches people who are starting their own record labels from scratch. Now, in this interview, we dive into his background and how he actually started out like an artist, as many of us are, but slowly transitioned into more of the marketing side of things as he saw there was a lot of opportunities there that he could apply his skills to. In this process, he also moved from New Zealand to the UK because there was a lot more happening there for him and there was a lot more opportunities he could take advantage of. Now, later on in this interview, we also talk about things such as common problems that artists face and we talk about the whole concepts of self-releasing and that he believes you need a crew of people around you to help you level up your skills, whether it's your music your marketing and promotion, your networking, basically anything out there because it's very difficult to go alone in this industry. Even though many artists try this, it doesn't end up working out for them. Nick also covers what makes an ideal candidate for somebody who wants to start their own record label and if they're thinking about it, why they should basically just do it. He also says that skills needed are things like entrepreneurship, you need to be focused on people and others, and also just be motivated and dedicated to seeing the long-term results. So if you're thinking about starting a label, this episode will be a goldmine. But even if you're not, there's a whole bunch of things here that Nick talks about that can be directly applicable to artists like you and I, and that we can help grow our careers with. So... So we're about to dive in, but before we do, if you're wanting to level up your music production skills, make sure you don't miss this opportunity and head to edmprod.com slash courses where we have a variety of different options for you to level up specific skills such as sound design, beginner production, mixing, songwriting, and a lot more. So if that's you and you're looking for something structured and action-based to actually get the results you're looking for in music, head to edmprod.com slash courses where you'll find a bunch of things there. But let's get into the EDM podcast with Nick Sadler. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the EDM podcast. Today, we are joined with Nick Sadler of The Label Machine. Nick, how you going, man? I'm really good. Uh, thanks for having me on the podcast. And uh, yeah, looking forward to getting into it. Yeah, man. It's pretty early for you over there at the moment, right? Uh, 6 a.m., I think, or 6.30 a.m. But the it's summertime over here, so it, it's nice and light outside. And uh, yeah, not too nice. bad. I've got my got my coffee so I'm good to go that's good man it's good I always get confused with the uh like hemispheres and and the seasons I'm like what oh man that's right you guys have nice weather we're like just coming out of winter at the moment so it's like the the bitter cold although probably not as bad as you guys get over there in London I'd say Uh, (laughs) I will never get used to January February beginning of March it's just there's a different type of coldness here that just gets you in your bones it's it's really hard to describe but yeah it's the winters here are worse than the winters in australia and new zealand 100 uh the 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 Mm, dream that's what i've heard yeah the dream is to go to like somewhere like spain or something for january february every year it's what uh it's sort of uh what most people aspire to do um not quite there yet but maybe so yeah yeah i think carl cox comes over to australia during summer and then goes back to the UK for, for summer, just kind of lives halfway between. And a lot of artists do that as well. Yeah, the dream. Or they, or they just move to LA. Yeah, or LA. That's the other one, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, nah, awesome, man. Nah, good to have you on. Um, so, I mean, yeah, you, you've done a, quite a lot in your years in the music industry um, obviously more on the marketing side of things rather than specifically production. And obviously we, we normally have mostly producers and artists on this podcast, but we do like to spice it up a little bit and have people more from the behind the scenes um, and, and like get to hear a bit from that perspective, uh, so to speak. So spice yeah, it. man, I mean, 
I'd love to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to hear like what your background's been like, how you got into music, and then um, like how you got into more of the marketing things side of things eventually too. Okay, I'll, I'll try and uh, I'll try and not ramble too much. Um, so I guess <laughs> um, I'll, I'll try and be as quickly as I can for as early as I can. So my dad was a drummer, so I was always sort of into music, um, but I yep. never. Um, I never read, like he tried teaching me drumming, but I never quite got into it, uh, until hip hop came out because, you know, you, we dr- you drum right. what, what the music is around you. And I like, like, I love music, but, and I like rock music and band music, but I didn't quite hit in me in the heart until hip hop came along and yeah. I totally connected with that. And I think that's because it was the first example of using electronic instruments to make music, drum yeah. machines and things. And that's when I kind of switched and, sure. and I remember... I remember when I, and then I wanted to start mixing sounds up and, and so I didn't, and I was, I went to something called a company called Dick Smith. I don't know if you guys had that in Australia. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like Dick an, Smith. That's classic. It's like an electro- <laughs> old electronic store and you could go in and you can buy yeah. like electronic components and, and, and make stuff. And I found you could have this thing that could mix four channels of audio, which I realized was a, a four channel mixer. Wow. And, and I went and bought yeah, it yeah. for like, twenty dollars and went home and my dad helped me build it and I put a little box in it. And that's how I could kind of mix stuff. And so I was very early, not even realizing that was that kind of early how you know, learning to make music and mix stuff up. And then yeah, fast forward to uni and um I was working on Contact 89 FM, um, which is like the student radio station oh, yeah. at the uni I went to uh in Hamilton. You probably probably heard about it if you're oh, uh, awesome. from New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah. So I, w- I was working there and I remember coming into the studio one day and looking down and there was a future music magazine there. And on the front cover, it said, nice. uh, how, how it was like chemical brothers, prodigy special, how they make their music. And I was like, yeah, how do they make their music? Cause it's like, it's not drums and stuff. And like, is it, you know, and, and then that yeah. opened me up and I, I put the magazine up and I, I installed, uh, rebirth on my PC at home, you know, which was the 808 and 909 emulator and the with two TB303s. And uh, and, that, and then nice. I kind of start. that was my kind of way into music. And then I declared at a party that I was going to win Battle of the Bands next year. Um, and my idea was because no, there wasn't really any right. electronic music in New Zealand or anything. And I was like, and I met this guy, uh, Mark, who was a jazz musician. And I said, we're going to be the New Zealand Chemical Brothers, bro. And he's like, okay. So we worked and we wrote music and and we entered Battle of the Bands. Um, and we got we won our first heats and we got all the way through to the final. Um, but we got um beaten by um oh god, why I've forgotten their name. They used to be called Trinket, and then they became oh, it's breaking the story now. They got they they ended up beating us. And it was also my very my very first. Yeah. So we smashed it. Like we were like, I, I guess. Yeah. A, a combo between the Beastie Boys and the and the Chemical Brothers. So we had big like block rocking beats and stuff, and then we were kind of rapping nice. and emceeing over the top of it. And um, we had like a smoke machine would bring on stage and a strobe, and everyone went nuts. <laughs> and then we would also we'd get nice. a keg and get everyone pissed at our uh, flat <laughs> before the uh, gig, and then we'd all now come down to the gig, and obviously everyone would be raucous. So we we yeah, absolutely everyone, t- we thought we were along. gonna win. We thought we were gonna win the we were gonna win the like the crowds went nuts for us. Um and that was my first lesson in in the politics of the music industry because we did and we got second. Um and the first first the first recording contract, sorry, the first prize was a ten thousand dollar recording contract to um record a uh, EP at the studio. And I found out afterwards that the band that won came second place the year before and they were kind of like, but they should have wanted to win and they'd been in cahoots with the studio and it was all a little bit kind of rigged. Um, and uh, I was like, kind of, right, and it kind of sucked. And I was like, oh, well, you know, like, you know, that's kind of the way things go. You've got to be in the industry and you've got to connect with people and have a community and have people rooting for you from the inside. Um, very important part of the, yeah. of the music industry. Um, so, yeah. So, and the second place was, a SM58 microphone for like $150, which oh, I've still got man. to this day. But I was like, the difference to be first- honest, that's a pretty good second prize. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, 
so yeah, that was so that's how I kind of got in. That was my way into the music industry, and then I uh, kept like you know I was producing, started de- started DJing, um, nice, and uh, ran a ran a ran a night with a guy called Matt Random play um, in New Zealand, and we were we were kind of bringing in people from um, around the country. We had Dan Ox coming over from Australia, and all these guys were making oh really yeah cool tunes. big up yeah 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 cool. big up Dan. Um, yeah, I've sent him a few of our tunes. So yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, because he's he's uh, he's yeah. quite big at George FM now. It's a mover and shaker there. Yeah, yeah. So we were like, well, we should, you know, why don't we why don't we sign some of these these tunes and and put them out and you know be, become a record label. So that was my first sort of way into kind of doing the marketing and the business side of music and and it um, and we uh, we got it uh, we got. Um, got the album cover design so we did it our first one was a compilation um signed all this music had a couple of my tracks on there did a in fact did a did a collab with pat from state of mind um which oh, is awesome. very old track, which we got on there yeah what was our name oh, it was a crack up name because he's such a joker so put so we put this all together <laughs> awesome. we got a distribution deal um we waited on the release day went to the uh went to the stores nothing in the stores we were like, what's going on? Like, what's mm-hmm. happened? Drove around to the distributor and they'd gone bankrupt like a week before and all our CDs were just sitting in boxes. <sighs> and it was like oh, such Damn. a fail and it was a real kick in the balls. Um, so, yeah, that yeah. was uh, that that was a bit of a hard lesson. Um, so that was my first record label was an actual absolute failure. <laughs> that was We did one release. Oh, man. Uh, and, yeah, yeah I think... I, I think I've still got a few of those CDs kicking around somewhere. So, and this was um, this was just as digital was coming on as well. That what and you you sort of you couldn't. There was no like CD baby or tune call then. You couldn't just sort of anybody yeah. couldn't upload at that point. Um, so yeah, I'd, I sort of I and then at that point I was like, you know what, I'm going to go to I'm going to go to the UK and and uh, you know all my mates that had left already, they were like, Nick, you've got to get over here. It's it's where electronic music is. It's where music is. You know, and and the other thing as well, yeah. like it's very at the time there were two DJs, Tim Finn and Greg Churchill, who who are making a full time career out of being DJ slash producers in New Zealand. Everybody else had a had a wow. second job or had a full time job, and you know because it's tough. Yeah. It's such a small, you know, and and you know, and then and and music as well. The niche of of electronic is even smaller again. And I was like, you yeah. know, you, you have to be in the top 40. You know, you've almost got to be a pop electronic act to be able to make a living of yeah. it in New Zealand. Now, these days, not so, it's, it's changed a little bit, but back then it was very much that way. Whereas, mm. you know, in the UK, you could be an independent underground artist and, and have a great career, you know, DJ around Europe and DJ around UK. Um, and, you know, and as I was yeah. into that niche music, I was like, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to yeah, go to the UK and give myself five years. So yeah, I came over to the UK, spent five, gave myself five years, and then the and then after four years, so integrated myself, went to like, you know, I remember just going to Fabric by myself loads of times just to listen to music and meet people, going to breaks gigs, going, you know, nice. trying to get into after parties and just, you know, chat to the DJs. And yeah, eventually befriended um a Tommy Dash, um, who is from Control Z. Um, we started hanging cool. out and then um he was like, Hey, do you want to start a record label? He wanted to leave hardcore beats where he was. Um, and so we were right. like, yeah, cool. Let's start a breaks label. Never say die. And, uh, and, and our, but our, on our first release, we got a, um, you know, this is like dubstep was just a very early kind of thing. Like it hadn't even become bro step at this point. And we yeah, got, yeah. Very um, deep sounds. Yeah. 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 And we had an excision and that's remix. Um, and you, I mean, you know, those guys went off, you know, they blew up as you know, and, um, and then, and then our second record, we had another dubstep remix of a foreign beggars tune on there. And, you know, then we sort of realized this was this new thing that was blowing up. Um, and so we sort of followed the, you know, we followed the trend and yeah. And then we just rode that wave. We, you know, we were lucky to be part of that first EDM wave into America, uh, and it was, you know, amazing yeah. journey, um, just blowing up. And, and so, yeah, I gave, that was four years into being in the UK. And then that was my, um, you know, that was my, uh, you know, I wanted to get a break in the music industry and, and that was it. And that was kind of, and then at that, and then running the label because it became so massive that just, you know, I, I just ended up that kind of dominated my life. And then we started managing the artists that we were signing and then wow. I got really into management. Um, 
and yeah, kept doing that. And then, um, yeah. And then wanted to kind of move into, you know, I, the, the thing with management is you can only manage so many people. And I was like, how can I help the many right, instead yeah. of the few? And, um, and I'd helped a, a few, I'd had quite a few artists set up their labels. Uh, and it's, you know, uh, the, the kind of the business side and, um, and a friend of mine, Chris from the prototypes was like, you know what, Nick, you know, like nice. you're really good at like big upping everybody else, like and making them like, you know, really famous. If you ever, why don't you put that uh, energy, you know, onto yourself and what can, you know, I was thinking, what could I do? And, you know, it's, that was the, the idea with the label machine was like, yeah, why don't I like, you yeah. know, write a book that will t explain everything and something that I wish I had when we started never say die. Cause you know, I just do it the hard way, read like yeah. Donald Pathman's you know, everything you need to about music industry, which is great oh, if yeah. you're based in America. Classic. Not so great if you're based in the UK. And yeah, so I, I just ended right, up, okay. started writing that book. And um, yeah, and then off the back of that, I, I sort of, because it's a, it's a nonfiction book, um, it, it, you know, it's a practical guide. A, a thing that a practical guide books used to piss me off is everybody works on a computer these days, right? You, you, that, that's, you're online, you're on a computer, yeah. if you're going to do anything. And it'd be like, you're reading the book and it's like, you know, you, whatever you got to go to this website and you're kind of holding the book open with your fingers and you're typing on. And I was like, what I want to do is take all that, yeah. all the practical stuff and I want to have it all online so you can just follow it. Like, you know, you just click on something, you yes. know, this is the next thing you need to do. And if you need to explain something, you can have a video and stuff. And so I sort of was like, right, I'll take all the practical parts of the book the real nitty gritty and, and, you know, templates for writing emails and all that kind of stuff. And I'll put that online yeah. and that's kind of how the, the label machine.com, the platform kind of got invented. So yeah, they sort of, and then that became its oh, own awesome. beast and, and kind of, and has now become its own thing. And then the, the book sort of almost became secondary. And then, you know, I managed, I, I, I managed to get a, um, a book publishing deal and a uh, guy loved what I was doing. He's like, yeah, I'll get your book published. And I was like, amazing. So uh, yeah. And then, Sweet. Got my book published. Ta da. Awesome. Right, that, so that That's is cool. the story. I hope that wasn't too long. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's good, man. That's um really interesting. Like it almost seems to me like it was a very slow, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but accidental movement into mm. the marketing side of things. Like you kind of just mm. were like like, you know, you tried this and then you oh, like, let's try like starting a label and then then you're mm. like, all right, everyone's moving to the UK and then you meet a guy mm. and you're like, oh yeah, let's, so it wasn't like as like intentional, if I'm not mistaken, it kind of just was like taking the opportunities when they came up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, but it, it, you know, mm. it, you know, what's that saying is like, you know, you create your own luck. Um, you know, yeah. it, I, it, exactly what you're saying, you know, well, where is things happening? Well, I'll go put myself in the place where it's most likely to be happening, where I'm going to try and create the most opportunities to meet these people that I need to meet. Where are they? They're in London, UK. Well, I better go there. You know, where are they hanging yeah. out? You know, at the gigs. Well, I better go to the gigs. Like even, you know, a lot of a lot of my uni yeah. mates and stuff weren't really into the music. And, you know, so I sometimes had to go to these gigs sort of by myself. Initially, you know, obviously I, I mm. eventually like, you know, connected with a crew. But, you know, I remember there were times and it was like, you know, 11.30, rainy, cold, catching a bus to some gig in South London and, you know, and all I want to do is turn around yeah. and go home and get into a warm bed. And I'm like, no, Nick, you're here. Yeah. You've given yourself five years. You're here to try and make opportunities. Just go there, introduce yourself to people. And, you know, it, it's, it's like a little bit of discipline, but that's what you got to do. And it, yeah, and it, and it pays yeah. off because eventually you're right. that there, there's, there is so much luck involved with it. There's so, you know, but you've got to be ready and mm. be there for when those opportunities arise to be able to capitalize on them. Um, so yeah, a yeah. bit of like, yeah, create, create your opportunities and then take them by the balls when they come along. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's very important. I mean, I, I can say the same for myself. It's like, I wouldn't have any of the opportunities I had today if I wasn't persistent or like just putting myself mm. out there and going to things. Well, it, it, even like you can apply it to the online world, I think as well, like mm. just like messaging people or like participating in communities, <sighs> like, like it's so important and, and like really seeing that pay off over a long period of time as well. Like I think a yeah. lot of artists can, can like benefit from that kind of approach because I think those are the ones who end up, who end up being successful as well. Like, mm. yeah. Oh, and it, you're right. It takes so much longer than you think. Um, yes. 
And everybody tells you that, but you think you're going to be different. And, you know, everyone's a bit impatient. Yeah. You know, our, our modern day society doesn't help that either. You know, it's very much become an instant gratification type thing and people want results yesterday, mm. um, which which doesn't yeah. help. But you do just have to stick at it. And, and you, you know, I, I think, you know, there's another point that you've raised there as well about, you know, being online and networking. Um, one of the most important things you can do is find a community and become part of a community and network. And, you know, I like, like I mentioned, I did it by going out, you know, going out to clubs, but, or doing it online. And, you know, I'll, I'll give you a, a really good example of why you need to do that. So um, I work, I work with an artist called uh, Siren and she's, um, she's doing really well. She's got, so, uh, she's got, she does drum basics. She's teaching some of her tunes. Um, oh, awesome. So, She's and she started a year like she started about a year ago, like you know, become like producing music, uh, DJing, like kind of moving into that whole area. And you know, so she's and she's the classic artist, awesome. wants everything yesterday. Um, and you know, we she wants to get yeah. it. And this is a this is a so I don't do any management anymore. So she's a she's a label machine yeah. member and a bit of a passion project for me. I was, I was actually introduced to her via Pat from Set of Mine when he was on tour. Um, oh, yeah. a couple of, uh, about a year and a half ago and I was like you know what there's no, there's a really under women aren't represented enough in in the DJ world and I was like look I'll, I'll give you a help of mm. blah 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 so um we, cool. you know she wants to, so she wants to get an agent and you know we were so we were introduced to um earth agency and I was speaking to them there oh, yeah. and and this was and it was really interesting the the um the agent there said um oh cool so what um you know what labels is she releasing on um and what circles is she rolling in and it was that last bit I was like what circles is she rolling in you know and she wasn't she's not really I mean she's not really rolling in any circles as such because we've had COVID so there hasn't been that opportunity to go out and do that kind of thing but it really made me realize like that you know that that that's an agent looking to sign someone to give you gigs and pay you money, and that's how important mm. like having a network and being part of a community or a circle or a movement. You know what she wants. You know what they want to hear is like, you know, and that's why you know are you that's why he's probably signing to a big and a big record label. Uh, you know, if you sign to Hospital, mm. they know where to kind mm. of place you as well. Like with gigs and stuff like that, you're sort of you're by being signed to a label like that, you're sort of being introduced into that community. But if if you're not on that, 100%. You, know, you need you need to show what you're kind of who you're part of because they need to know where to fit you into. And also, it shows that you know you've yeah. got independent support in the industry. You're part of a trend, a movement, yeah. and what's going yeah. on. So, yeah, it, it's just exactly. it, by trying to do everything, you know, trying to just be a solo person or a lone wolf, you know, is going to be very, very difficult. Um, have a lone wolf brand, 100%. but behind the scenes, yeah, you need to be part of. You need to be part of something. That that's so key as well because I feel like there's definitely and I, and I was actually going to ask your thoughts on this because there's a this culture now of self releasing and and you know there's there's a lot of merit to it I think but the the one downside of like the self releasing and you know being able to do a lot of things on your own I think is there's this lack of um, quality control maybe is the right word not only with the music, but with branding and a whole other host of things, especially if you're trying to build a career. And do you see that is like an increasing problem? Like there's less kind of accountability or like, I don't know what the right word is, like checking that like the artist is doing the right things, like like making sure they are posting things and like mm. taking opportunities. Like, because I feel like that a lot of artists kind of missing that key component when it comes to their building their careers. Yeah, so I I agree. I mean, at the end of the day, it, it kind of sucks that there's just a glut of rubbish out there. There's probably possibly, you know, maybe clogging up your social streams or whatever. Um, mm. But, you know, the the cream will rise to the top at the end of the day. Um, yes. what, I, what I would say, though, with, you know, the, the, the self-releasing is that it needs to be part of a bigger picture. So... Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, you know, what I would say, you know, if you're starting out, um, you know, send your music to, you know, send your music to, to record labels that you'd like to be signed to while you're doing that though, you know, if no one's picking them up straight away, you still want to keep the ball rolling. 
release music your release music yourself um and mm. you know try and you know understand branding you know look look work with somebody who's going to be able to give you a good marketing plan um help you guide on that on that kind of thing um you know there's uh, we mm. do it at the label machine there's you know there's uh, other guys there's uh, adam ivy there's um Bistimo do it and who's the other guy damien keys there's a, there's a few people out there that will kind of oh, yeah, can awesome. help you on on that on that side of things so so do that yeah. but the end goal you know if is uh, what i would say is you want to do eventually try and get signed to a label or do remixes for them or be affiliated with a label with some of your yeah. releases but you know these labels will look at who what you're already doing so it's always a bit like chicken and egg right so you, yeah, you have yeah. to still show that you've you can do something because you know as, as you know even when we're running labels i was like you, you now need to look at an artist and it's everybody know if you, everybody can write great music and produce stuff. It's really easy to do that. There's always going to be these really outliers yeah. that do freaky dicky stuff that you just like will sign yeah. on the, on the music alone. Very rare. Most of yeah, it is like, yeah, okay, totally. cool. what like, have you got a fan base? You know, have you proved to us that people like you independently and that, you know, you can have a connection with people because you know, as as a label, you need to be able to see that can be done, and and a label will put put fuel on the fire. So, you know, as an artist, yes. you need to prove that you can do that, and that you and that you understand the business side of music as well. Because, you know, like that working with artists that get that side stuff is just so much easier. You know, like oh hey, um, yeah. you know, we we need you to do a quick instrumental and a and a VIP on this. Okay, um, hey, can we need you? Yeah. We need you to, um, you know, we're doing a press thing and we need you to do this. Okay. Like that's the artist you want, not like oh yeah, yeah but oh, do I have to do that or what I was thinking is I want to have yeah. this really cool like yeah where it's like no that's completely unrealistic like you don't get it that's you yeah. know like no. you've got to go on and do some promo oh I hate doing social media like I don't want to I just want to be like a cool guy in a leather jacket smoking and everyone likes me fuck off like <laughs> you can't you can't sorry I don't mean to swear I don't know if that's if you can no, edit okay. that out. Um, but you know, <laughs> like that, that can be a, you know, that can be a thing, but you know, it's, it, it's, it's a far bigger struggle going on that. You do need to understand that. Yeah. So sort of going back to the, to the original mm. point, um, I was trying to make is yeah, make like put your mute, do self-release your music, you know, and use the record label method. Obviously that's what I kind of, you know, that's what I pitch mm. and, um, show yeah. that, you know, you can stand independently as an artist, but then start sending your music to, you know, to labels, asking labels, hey, here, here you can check out some of the stuff mm. I've done. People are into it. You can check yeah. out my, you know, how many people are, how many months I've got on Spotify, um, you know, for, for your for your guys' audience. Um, can I do a remix on spec? You know, like where they'll give you the stems. Mm. If they like the remix, they'll, they'll put it out. If they don't, they don't. But that's a great opportunity. I mean, that's how I'd start. Totally. You know I mean? Like they might like your remix and then you're like, oh, cool. Hey, I've got some demos. You want to check them out? And that's your kind of foot in the door, you know, and then release on some record labels. Um, and then, you know, maybe that's where you'd want to happily stay there, um, grow yourself. And then eventually, you know, you mm. run your, you know, maybe start your own label um, eventually and, and, you know, you know, yeah. the world's your oyster. So, yeah, that's kind of, that's my take on kind of where to do exactly. things. So I still think it, it is a value to, to yeah. you know, put your own music out there. Just, yeah, like you said, you need to do it properly. And if you don't mm. know what you're doing, go and find the experts that know what they're doing and just follow their blueprints or formulas. It's, it's not rocket science. You know, it's the same thing. What do you, if you don't know how to make a tune, what do they do? They go to you guys and you tell them how to make a tune and then they get an yeah. amazing tune. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I think even just like getting feedback, like if you, cause it's, I think that's the thing, it's possible to do it all without even like coming across one person. Like you can actually just put music out into the world with a, without even talking to someone. And that kind of is like, it, it's, it's fine to be able to do it, but it's like it, you could easily build the bad habit of thinking, I don't need to talk to anyone. I can just like do this on my own. And it's like, if, I, I'm kind of of the philosophy that like if your music's not good enough to get signed by a label, it's probably not good enough to get released like self-releasing either. I mean, there is a there is a bit of like flexibility on that. And I know some people might disagree with that exact position, but like it's it's a worth thinking about like if there's a reason 
and and you know, I think if you're a smaller slash like beginner artist, you probably shouldn't pitch to the absolute biggest label in your industry straight away. Maybe uh, unless your music happens to be really freaking good already, but like start small and then work your way up. But mm. um, I think yeah, you have to at least have uh, someone else interested or liking your music. And I think a label is a great way to do that because it's like they actually see the potential in the music and. Yeah. So the and, and yeah, doing all the other things, I suppose, is a big part of it as well. Like having a presence. Um, yeah. Mm. No, no. I, I, I have to say, I think, as, I think, especially so with electronic music and genre electronic music. If you're doing house music, drum and bass, mm. dubstep, the, the the niches are so defined, you know, by mm. the scene and by the labels. Um, I think Mm. it's more so that, you know, if you can't get your track signed to a, you know, a decent drum and bass label or or even a a, a sort Mm. of, you know, a mid-level drum and bass label, you know, maybe Mm. it's, maybe it's not quite there. Maybe it's not quite there, especially if you're writing the same kind of drum and like the same kind of drum and bass that that label puts out. So, um, yeah, yeah, I I do have to agree, like, you know, go back to the drawing board um, and put something together and get it out there. Um, and, and yeah, and, and I guess, I guess, you know, going along the, um, you know, where, if you are, if you are signing to a sort of more mid-level, um, label though, it's always beneficial to understand how the marketing and, and how you kind of going to grow yourself as an individual artist works as well. Like there's, I, there was a, a on a, a um, Q and A I had last night, you know, there was a guy there and he's got, he, his yeah. music's been put out on a, on a sort of smallish record label, but you know, they don't really have yeah. much of a budget and you know, the, they're doing a little bit of stuff, but not really a lot. And he was like, well, what can I do? Like, cause you know, as an artist, he was like, he, he wants to help them and, and grow, you know? And I was like, okay, cool. Well, you just need to really look at it as if not that you're self-releasing, but you know, like think about it, like, well, if you, if you were like, you need to kind of take care of all the kind of marketing side and pushing yourself out there, yeah. maybe you know, do a, do an email list and, and whatnot. And just think yes. about the, the label is just taking care of your distribution and the admin side of it and making sure your music's registered, you know, with, um, with the uh, um, pros and things like that. And then everything else you just need to do yeah. yourself. And I said, the label's going to be pretty happy. Like, you know, if, if, if an artist comes to me and goes, Hey, I want to like, you know, do a, a a, a Facebook marketing Instagram campaign to drive streaming sales. I'm going to put a grand into it. All right. Awesome. Like, yeah. you know, can I help you yeah, edit good, the artwork for it, yeah. a teaser trailer video? You know, like that's a positive thing to do. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I guess, you know, whether you're self-releasing or on an, or, or putting on another record label, um, you know, you always need to be thinking about your own branding and, you know, and, and, and that's, that's another yeah. thing I've noticed as well with really some of the, the most successful artists I've worked with is they, they, gen, they genuinely take an interest in making sh- like in, in their own career and what they can do to help out. And they, they're not just like, I oh, now I'm signed. You guys just take care of everything for me. Um, you know, especially on a branding side, sure, like, right. You know, I mean, you, you get like, you know, feed me, he does all his graphics. Um, I know like, you know, the Zomboy edits all yeah, his own yeah. video stuff. Eptic is a, is a, is a huge one. Like a lot of these guys, you know, they're naturally creative. Alex really? Perez, okay. you know, he does all his, you know, he does all his artwork yeah. and stuff and, and, and it makes such a big difference. Yeah, that's crazy. So, um, yeah, like. Mm-hmm you know, invest in yourself and don't just, you know, expect somebody else to do it. So I guess, yeah, whether you're self-releasing or putting on a label, um, you need to be taking care of that sort of business side all the time. Yeah, it's so true. Especially if you've got something extra like that, it's always good to like, you know, utilize it and make the most of it if you can do artwork or or you can, mm. you know, you do have a bit more marketing savvy, like from something you've learned or something like make the most of those extra skills because that's what I guess, yeah, will help you yeah. make, will help you to stand out in the long term. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it also, if you don't have, if you don't have those skills, learn how to use After Effects. Like, it's not that yeah, much yeah. different producing music. Like, everything's in, it's instead of yeah, yeah. audio layers, it's just visual layers and there's plugins to like change the thing and it's all time based. Like, and it's, it's yeah, a huge yeah. benefit to be able to go, you know, make a, uh, make a short, you know, one minute video teaser trailer for your music and being able to hand that over to the label or put it out yourself, hugely beneficial. Like 
those are the, those are the mm. extra skills you should be looking at doing. You know, if you want to, you know, have more control over your career and and accelerate it faster than mm. you know where it's going for you at the moment. Mm. Do you think visuals particularly are like the way to go? Because I'm I've been feeling that with a lot of artists, the ones who, you know, are really pushing themselves forward and, and doing some cool things are definitely pairing it like with visuals, like whether that's like the traditional music video format or even just like stuff on social media, like, yeah. Like, do you think there's, uh, and I, I guess anyone in particular doing anything interesting like that or any tips you have for artists who maybe want to start to incorporate some more visual elements when they're promoting their music? I mean, you know, we are, you know, we are as human beings, audio visual people. Um, mm. And, you know, you, and, and nowadays as well, with everyone having one of these things in their hands the whole time, mm. um, you know, no one, no one's using their phone just with headphones. I mean, maybe when you're going for a run or something, right? You listen to yeah. a podcast or, or, your, or your music, but generally, right, a lot of your time is dominated with the visual side of things. And it's a way of driving interest and connecting that with your music. And it's a, it's the other, it's mm. another form of branding. Yeah. Um, you know, like, I mean, I know, you know, and, and so definitely visual is important and then more so video moving visual is becoming more important. Instagram, yeah. the CEO recently said that Instagram is now no longer a picture company. It's a video company. You know, wow. that's, that's the direction they're going. So, um, yeah. being able to incorporate, video elements alongside your music yeah hugely beneficial um i mean you know when you play live eventually if you play live i mean if we're, we're, we're talking about djs and stuff you're gonna have to yeah. have some visuals right so yeah um, you're either yeah. gonna have to have someone else make them for you or you're gonna have to create something or at least have an outline of kind of what you need um yeah i mm. i i un understanding and and incorporating that into your into your overall career is pretty important. Some people naturally do it as well. Some people mm. are just naturally kind of get that side of it. Um, and if you don't, that's fine, yeah. but it's something you should definitely, you know, put some time aside to focus on. And, um, you know, I guess the most basic one is, is getting your logo designed, isn't it? That's usually the first place people start. Yeah. Also like your face. Like, I know that's not necessarily like a visual element that's part of your brand, but like, I mean, I know some people may feel a bit more uncomfortable with sharing like their face and you don't have to do that there's been plenty of successful acts that have done good visual branding without like being a person i guess like you know daft punk being being a uh, an example of that but i think yeah a lot of like just being not being afraid to like show your face on social media like people can identify you that's how we communicate and see each other as humans right mm. yeah i think yeah yeah I mean, you know, Daft Punk though, like the helmets, yeah, are pretty iconic. Exactly. You know, so they, you know, they just sort of replace their faces with different, more interesting faces. You can Same say. with Dead Mouse, um, right? But, you know, and that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and uh, Marshmallow. You know that that yeah. stuff. You know, it's really hard to nail that though and get it right. Mm, <laughs> like, yes. Um. You know, gimm gimmicks are really hard to get right and be cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you can make it, if you can make it work, but e even without, you know, sort of having some mask or something like that, definitely putting your, definitely putting your face out there and, and we're just putting yourself as a person out there. And I think it's about finding who, finding who you are and who you're comfortable with and being mm. proud of it. And then, you know, and, and putting yourself out there and not giving a shit what people kind of mm. think, because ultimately most people are going to connect with the real you. I mean, it's so, it's such a cliche though, isn't it? What is it? It's like, just be yourself. But then who am I, you know? Yeah. Like, and it's and it when you're younger, that's a really hard thing to kind of do as well. Um, if you're, you know, I, f for that though, I'd say if you're unsure of who you are, like find a scene that you like the look of mm. and just kind of like imitate what they're doing yeah. and ride on the coattails of, a, of another kind of like scene. And then eventually you'll kind of find your own way in there um, mm. because of individually, individuality will always shine through at the end of the day. Yes. Um, so yeah, if you know who you are and, and you put yourself out there, if you're not sure, find a scene that you can connect with and, and imitate it.
it's almost like when you're making music, putting like creative constraints on yourself. It's like a similar analogy because I mean, yeah, when I started producing as well, I can say for sure that I definitely felt overwhelmed, but like, which scene do I belong to? Like, what am I trying to do? And I felt like I had to do everything original. Like everything had to be unique. And it's like, well, it's nice to think that that could, that could all, like be a hundred percent true, but then it's like, most people are just like doing a slightly different version of what someone else is already doing. And it's their own take on it. So I think, I think it's like when you're learning music production, you definitely try and imitate the people you like in the beginning. And then eventually your own sound will start to shine through over the top. And yeah. I think, yeah, it applies with like the scene or the, you know, like genre or whatever mm. that you're being a part of, like imitate what others are doing. And then eventually mm. over time you'll, you'll kind of forge your own path. Off, Definitely off the side. Learn off, learn by imitation, hundred mm. percent. Also, as, as original as you think you're being, as yeah. well. Like, let's use drum and bass as an example. Like, you might mm. think you're being the most original, like, new thing in drum and bass. Yeah. Right. Go and ask somebody who in classical music to listen to your music. They will say, not only does all the drum and bass, your drum and bass sound like everybody else's, they will also think that your music sounds the same as house music and yeah. techno music. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. when you think you're being original, you are just, you know, you're in your little bubble. You're by no way you're being that original. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I, yeah, you, yeah, it's a, it's, yeah, I think, I think you're better off, like you said, you know, I imitating while you're learning and integrating and then finding mm -hmm. your kind of own way, which will naturally kind of come out. Yeah. I mean, even pop music is, is essentially that, right? Like it's, it's, it's got certain elements that are similar throughout a lot of it because it works so well and because that's what people like. So it's not bad to, mm. to do that. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, Switching, uh, switching it up a little bit. One thing I wanted to ask you, going back to kind of your experience, is so you worked and co-founded Never Say Die and did that. You also then, if I'm not mistaken, co-founded Disciple. Um, what made mm -hmm. you kind of decide to do another record label? Uh, and what, like, yeah, what was different about the two experiences? I guess because it's interesting hearing like what you what you've done differently over time. Yeah. So basically, um, Dodge from Dodge and Fusky, yeah, um, was um, Rob. Um, yeah. So we, I was managing um, those guys. They yeah. really just kind of, you know, they they wanted to put out more music. You know, they were like, oh, "I want to do this, want to do this," you know, and, and you know, and, you know, you've got your you've got your release schedule and your slots. Um, and we were like, you know what? And he's very entrepreneurial, like crazy yeah. entrepreneurial. And we were like, you know what? You'd, it'd be a really good idea, I think, for you to start your own label and yeah. put your own music, and, and we'll kind of we'll back we'll back you as well, and we'll you know give you all the you know we'll we'll invest money in you, right? You know, we're, we're, we're shareholders of the company, and we'll t you know we'll give you all the playbooks on you know how to do everything. I mean that that that's the very first iteration of the label machine was you know we had these right um uh like operating processes which were like called the you know the, the main one was called the bible then we had the the torah for like merch i think you know it was a bit of a like a a joke to call them after religious texts for the different right. pieces so yeah we were kind, we kind of we set them up um that we also um wanted to see what it would be like doing um trying different distribution um companies as well so i think and they were on um believe digital okay was it believe yeah they were, yeah so we were like was kind of like seeing what that was like putting the music out on there so yeah that that's kind of how it kind of came about and they started and you know they our astronaut so he linked up with rossi um you know they were rossi was doing um uh, medics um drum and bass stuff and he's also yep. doing a bit of electro house stuff under astronaut Cool. Um, so that was their, you know, they were like, cool, we'll put our music out on Disciple. And, and, you know, it's kind of how it was started. And, you know, they were lucky. Cool. They they kind of, they came in just before those kind of the, the dubstep doors closed in the US. Right. They kind of just got in there and, um, and, and you know, and, oh, well, you know, the rest is history. You kind of see how well they've dominated. I mean, I think, and yeah. I think something that they did really well um, is they were very much like they wanted to be a real community of artists mm. and you know they wanted to have you know they always had this vision of having this like 
office studio where everybody would come in and hang out and, and, yeah, you know, nice. and, and work together and, and that kind of more kind of family vibe. Um, and I, you know, they, and they've, they've done really well at that. And I think it's what makes Disciple, you know, really special. And, and, you mm. know, so it, you know, some people can think maybe that's a bit cheesy, but I think it's great what they've done and, and they've got an amazing community over there. No, I think it's really cool. I think, yeah, like some people can see that's cheesy, but like at the end of the day, people want community, whether they like to admit it or not, people like to feel a part of something. And I, I can totally see that, like even like getting Virtual Riot involved and they've been involved, like seems mm. like it's been involved a lot in like pr the production side of things as well. And like, mm. I remember that video, it was like the how to like, make a studio for like under a hundred dollars or something on youtube and it was like yeah virtual right sitting at a computer and like making music with like the most bare bones set up that kind of stuff's cool like <laughs> yeah no yeah that's all awesome. i mean talking about communities one word monster cat yeah yeah 100 percent. they have absolutely like they were ver that community vibe and and you know very central to what they did um and uh yeah and i mean and they you know automating things and making processes and using tech like Mike super onto it with it. Like they've absolutely smashed it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's an example of, you know, when you put your community first, how well you can do. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, yeah, doing the compilations, I suppose would have been part of that too. Just getting a large group of artists involved early on, mm. like would have made a big difference. Um, mm. Yeah, mm. man. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah. And obviously fast forward now, now you're running, the label machine and are you doing it pretty much all by yourself nowadays like kind of one man show sort of thing or do you have other people involved helping you with that yeah so i have a i've got two staff members who have out i've got a content um manager who who does all editing and edits mm. my podcast and uh videos and you know when we need a new landing page for stuff he kind of takes care of all of that cool um dan who's awesome uh and then there's uh ricky who is like the community manager um so you know he kind of does all like posting stuff on social media and and answering people's questions and things like that um so yeah it's 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 slowly growing um but yeah i mean one one i've normally always worked in partnerships with companies you know yeah. there's always been two or, or three shareholders or something and that one of the one of the other things I wanted to do with the label machine is like, I'm going to see what it's like just being when I'm the only one in fully control. And uh, you know, it has its benefits that you just you call all the shots. Yeah. Um, but it's def the the downside is not having somebody to bounce ideas off, mm. um, and it can be a little bit. You know, I, I mean, I feel a bit sorry for, for Dan and uh, for Dan and Ricky sometimes, especially Dan, because they sort of sometimes end up becoming my, um, you know, my soundboard, whether they uh, like yeah. it or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm lucky. I've got a, a lot of friends who are, um, you know, some of them are uh, individual entrepreneurs as well, or have got their own companies, and you know, we can always bounce ideas off each other, which is quite cool. But um, yeah, that that's I, I was definitely intention to kind of be that way. And kind of um, run yep. it solo, but you know, long term, five years. You know, I want to just, I want to keep growing it. I want to start um, training up uh, other artists to kind of do what I do, like where they understand the kind of business side enough that they can then, you know, almost replace me, I guess, as being the uh, person who is the advice and you know can help people awesome. guide them and you know teach them about branding and stuff like that. So. Yeah, it'll, it'll keep growing. I've I've got a ten year plan for it, and uh, cool. you know I'm I'm pretty excited. And there's there's yeah, it's it's a like you said, people need that guidance. And I th I think you know when you when you mention about feedback with record labels on music, mm. you need the same thing on your kind of on your business and your branding side. You need yeah. to have someone that you can go like, is, am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? Um, yes. And you know it, it's things you know what we've got label machine is as you know, really helps out with that, either from myself or other people in the community as well. It, mm. um, it's hugely beneficial, it's, you know, it's, it's, but one of the, you know, and I'm part of other communities as well. And it's, it, it's the, it's the biggest draw card is being able to be unsure about something, post a question and get feedback, hugely mm. beneficial. That's awesome. Um, on that then, like talking about the label machine, say there's an artist out there who's listening to this podcast and is like thinking about, you know, maybe I want to launch a record label. Um, what do you think like a good like candidate 
for a producer because I think this is a trend that's happening more and more and it's really cool because um, you know artists having great creative visions and now being able to be more involved with that you know releasing side of things for other artists mm-hmm. as well like what do you think makes a good candidate for someone who's thinking of starting a good record label and like at what point do you think that's a good idea um, in someone's career to do um you you have to have a little bit of a a, a bit of an entrepreneurial flair and that you mm. um yeah I, I yeah you have to have a bit of an entrepreneurial flair i guess like and yeah. be and be willing to kind of put the hard um yards in and be and be a little bit you know be willing to um to put your time into something that's not just all about you 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 if yes. you're very much like i'm an artist it's only all about me 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 you're probably not running a label is probably not going to work very well for you. Yeah. Um, so that, that would be the first thing um, being, um, you know, be, be, have, make, have, you've got a bit of time. I mean, also if you're looking for a, you know, I, I believe as well, people, you know, it's very, it's very hard to just be a artist who only makes money from recording music and releasing it. And maybe playing out live, right? Yes. There's, you know, yeah, there's yeah. a very full, small percentage of people. There's a large chunk of people that do that, but then also have a, uh, you know, a part-time job or another job um, that, you know, helps pay their rent. And if you can have that other job in the music industry, I think you're winning. You know, like whether mm. you're a, you know, you're an agent, whether or not you teach other people how to make music, you know, whether or not, you know, you run the label machine, maybe like what I do, you know, whether you do sample packs, whether yep. you run a record label and you s- sign other artists. So, you know, I think it's if if you're looking for creating your own a, a, an, an alternative income stream in the music industry um, and you're business mm. minded, you know, it's a great place, you know, and, and off the back of a label as well. You know, you there's so many things that can feed off. You can do compilations. You can yep. start doing um you know, uh, sample CDs say, um, yeah. you might have a studio, you can start like, you know, doing, uh, production stuff from recording people. Um, you can do, you know, label nights and, you know, start doing management side. You understand the publishing, set up a, you know, a sub publishing label off, um, uh, song trust. So it, it will, yeah. you know, uh, down the line, it will open up many doors for you to kind of, um, you know, to, to make money. And, and another thing as well is once you know how to do it properly, like, you know, it's a 50, 50 deal normally on independence, right? Yeah. So if you're releasing music and so if you start a label, right. And you, and if you're just releasing your own music, you did three releases a year. Okay, cool. you got three releases a year and the income come from that. Yeah. If you sign, if you start a label and then sign somebody else and it's 50, 50, right. You're going to get half of that income for your label, right? Yeah. Then if you sign two artists, you're now the 50 and 50 is a hundred percent. That's like having another one of you just releasing music again. Exactly. You sign four artists. It's exactly. like having three of you releasing music. So, yes. you know, if you're, if you've got music that, you know, can make money from royalties and, and publishing and stuff, then, you know, a label could be a really good way for you to kind of set up that income stream and, and build a bit of a, um, you know, build up a, a library of copyrights as well that sort of makes money overnight. Yeah, um, yeah, and in times that so yeah, by, like, I, I think I diverged off with. Sorry, you go. Sorry, go on. Oh. <laughs> no, you go. No, uh, okay. you go. <laughs> um, I was just gonna say, and you t- and you time, <laughs> and you times that like five, ten. <laughs> um, you times that five, ten, twenty years down the track, and you know that that adds up. It multiplies over time. Like the more, the bigger your catalog is, essentially the the you know the better situation you're in. So it's like a long-term benefit to that as well, right? Uh, and you know what? One thing I wish I'd realized earlier on is how long those royalties and copyrights, like even off fad, like not fad music, but even you think off niche music, you think, you know, like, you know, think music that was like 10 years old, like with electronic music, you know, if we're talking about electronic music, you think, mm. well, no one's listening to music from 10 years ago. It's always what the latest thing is, fresh stuff, what's on Beatport and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. People listen once, I guess people like stuff. And I think maybe with the streaming age as well, and people get it added onto a playlist, yep. like it just keep making money and it's just passive income. Like yep. it, 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 it's, you know, given me a lot of freedom, you know, but having labels and, and, mm. and, helping people release their music and then having the benefit of, you know, sharing in those royalties. Like, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's one of the ultimate passive incomes. 
um you know, like hundred percent. Yeah, I, I I think we diverged off what your original like who the ideal candidate is, and kind of moved on to like why you should just start one. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think I agree. Like, whether it is a label or something else, it's definitely having a second thing to to like monetize. Mm-hmm. You know, I, like what I always like to say this to people is like monetize around your music don't just monetize your music do both obviously but like mm. yeah there is a mm. nice freedom that comes from having a secondary or, or, or like outside source rather mm. than just just your um royalties mm. and shows because i mean covid's a perfect mm. example of that when shows aren't possible and and you know thinking long term mm. as well it is it is nice and and there are some fun ways you can be involved in the industry um rather mm. than you know, mm. start start an education company. Not that I started EDM prod, but work for an education company or do something like <laughs> yeah. that. You know, like, um, yeah. So there's so many options. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. I mean, I'll say actually one one thing is your ideal ideal candidate is um, if you are pretty good at um, design, like you know, like uh, artwork or, you know, you don't even have to be like a designer, but you know, you can put stuff together in Photoshop that looks pretty cool, and you can mm. edit videos and things like that um a large part of running an independent label is being able to put all those visual assets together you know creating the artwork you know someone Mm. sends you away creating the artwork and doing all that kind of stuff if you uh if you have a knack for that you're like that's half the battle won Mm. um because you don't have to pay somebody you know you can pretty much do everything for zero dollars because one of the biggest expenses when you start off is having to pay an art, someone to do your artwork or do your editing and stuff. And if you can do that yourself, you know, like it's, that's, that's just about all of, you know, that's just about all of all your kind of social and online marketing and stuff. So if you'd have a knack for that, yeah, like that's definitely a, a good precursor to it all. Um, and yeah, and going back about, you know, starting an education thing, you're just saying like, you know, with, with your work and, and with what I'm doing, another massive benefit to that is, which I didn't realize is the satisfaction when people go, you know, they go, Oh my God, like, thank you so much. Like, this is Mm -hmm. just what I needed. This has made such a difference to my career. Thank you. You know? And I'm like, well, Hey, you're paying me. (laughs) Like I'm not doing this for free, but like, yes, it's really, it's really nice when you're being able to help people and genuinely make a difference. Um, and that's a really, you know, if everyone really wants to go into the kind of education side, um, it's a sort of, it's a definitely a benefit. I didn't realize that's actually quite, quite nice. It makes you feel like, you know, mm. making a little bit of a difference in the world. Yeah, no, it, it always um, pays off when you're investing in, in something and then it helps someone. It's like, oh, those little moments keep you going sort of thing. Nah, totally, Yeah, exactly. Man. Agreed. Um, awesome, man. What have you got coming up in the next zero to 12 months that you'd like to share about? Um. Well, there'll be an audiobook version uh, of my book. Awesome. Um, the book actually doesn't come out until October in the US. Okay. Um, so the, we, we'll start our press campaign there. So if you are listening in the US, hold fire for a little bit longer. Um, and uh, label machine um, wise, um, just kind of, I think, more of the same. We're doing more interactive sessions. So I, we were cool. just before we started the podcast, you know, we we're talking about how you get people to take action. And mm. we're starting to do these sessions where you, um, everyone comes on board and everyone's online at the same time. And like, right, we're going to, for instance, write a press release and everybody, we all write a press release together and yes. we all step through it. Um, that's that's a big part I'm really going to kind of focus on as well. Um, so we sort of do like, you know, because, you know, I, yours, it's maybe like the same as yours. It's about a la carte. You can come in and just learn as you kind of want. Yeah. But just kind of putting time frames around things to yep. kind of give people deadlines to get stuff done. So yeah. sort of like doing that. And um, and then an, outs- an outside uh, outside music as well. I work in the film industry. I have a um, film company called First Flights. And, oh, awesome. Um, I've just been making films, been making lots of uh, short films as well. So, um, got a few of those coming out this year as well. Nice. Um, yeah, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. yeah Check that... out fir- first, first flight.com as well. So Sweet. if anyone's interested in a bit of film stuff, uh, I've expanded my empire, the <laughs> entertainment empire into film. Nice. I'll uh, <laughs> leave a link for the, that in the, the show notes for this one as well, man. Yeah. If, if, if anybody does want to start a label, um, you know, obviously go check it out. There's a bunch of free resources on the website. 
Yeah. Um, and although if you do, I mean, I'm not sure when this is coming out, but in September we're doing a whole special where you can um, join for just uh, $1 uh, for 14 days and see what and get everything, see what it's like, come in. If you like it, you can stay on. Cool. Uh, and if you don't, you can uh, you can leave. So, yeah, if you're listening to this in September, it's a good time to come and join. Sweet, man. I think this one will be coming out uh, close, close to then. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll line up somewhat. Um, awesome, man. Um, I've got one last question that I like to ask everyone who comes onto the podcast. Uh, I, I kind of like to live as if, like, you know, no regrets and I've learned from all my mistakes and that kind of thing. But if there's one thing you had to go change back in your past, uh, what do you think it would be and why? Yeah, no regrets, but definitely have moments of serious reflection. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a tough. Serious reflection, I would say that I, I'm just trying to think. So I, I, one thing as I've got older, I've realized is when I was younger, I used to think like when I was 20, I would compare myself and think, you know, and I was producing at the time and stuff. And I was like, oh my God, um, I'm not the prodigy or I'm not the chemical brothers. I've, I've missed the boat. I'm 20 yeah. years old. And this is what I was thinking when I was 20 years old, I've missed the boat. You know, I need to start looking at like a, an, an alternative career and stuff like that. Right. Looking back now, when I look at a 20 year old, I'm like, you, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> You should have just doubled down. That was exactly the time to just go balls deep. And like you were so at the beginning, why are you even comparing yourself? Um, yeah. So yeah, one thing I would have, one thing I would say to my younger self would be, you know, don't, don't compare yourself to other people. You're on your own journey. And, and when you're young, like when you're under the age of 30, just go hard on, on, on chasing your dreams. Yeah. Um, because yeah, now, now I'm, and, and yeah, now, like now I'm older, you know, I just look back and, I, you know, and I realized just, yeah, how young I was. Um, so yeah, that, that would be, I don't know if that's quite a regret if I really answered your question properly. Um, but yeah, I, I think maybe I said, I, I, I would regret that I, I didn't go more full on with what I, you know, chasing my dreams when I was younger, uh, I was a bit more too hesitant and thinking maybe I've missed the boat. When yeah. Really I, I hadn't even like, you know, left the, sh left the shore yet. No, it's a good shout, man. That's a good shout. Um, I think I 100% agree. Like, while you're young, make the most of it for sure, man. Um, sweet, man. Well, this is just about over. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, before uh, we wrap it up, uh, is it what's the best place people can find you online? www.thelabelmachine.com. Awesome. <laughs> um, you can get me on if you go to Nick Sadler, NSDMT, uh, is that's what I'm on Instagram. Um, but yeah, I mean, head to the website. There's, you know, at the bottom, we've got the links to Facebook, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, pretty much it, really. Just Google awesome. the just Google the label machine, and there's a whole bunch of stuff now. Sweet, I've got to that point where you can just Google me. That's good. Good point to be at. <laughs> Sweet man, I'll leave that all in the notes as well. But Nick, thank you so much for coming yeah. on, man. It has been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thanks, man. I I really enjoyed this. Um, it was awesome. Yeah, great podcast. Awesome questions. I hope I didn't ramble too much and I hope you, the listeners, you know, sort of got a little bit of insight into, you know, journey and, and behind the scenes. I'm sure they have, man. Awesome. Thank you so much. 